Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. Today I'm going to talk about running a thousand kilometers in coronavirus. I'm going to talk about how to try to protect myself, protect others, and uh, what lessons I learned along the way. And of course, I'm going to talk about masks. So the problem with coronavirus is you could be asymptomatic. You wouldn't know you had it. And that's part of the problem. It's not like you get a whole lot of brown spots across your face and people can kind of look at you and make their own judgments. So you don't know if you got it and you don't know if you're passing it on. And uh, so you gotta do some things, I think, assuming you have got it. So in this video, I'm primarily talking about how to stop spreading it. I mean, we know how to reduce the chance of catching it, but I'm trying to stop spreading it because actually I think that's easier. It's easier to stop yourself spreading it. And if we all did that, then it's the same thing as stopping ourselves catching it. In February, I went for a short run on a treadmill. Uh, I don't run on treadmills often, but I, I knew there was a virus. I have colleagues and friends in Beijing and Wuhan, and they kind of contacted me and he'd seen the news and we knew something was up. And I was probably a little more conscious than usual, but I was looking at the treadmill as I was running along and I wasn't trying hard. I was just lightly loosening up at lunchtime. And uh, I couldn't believe the droplets, the size of the things that were coming out of here. Um, I mean, there's sweat and you're used to that that fires away across the whole treadmill, but I was much more observant than usual at just basically spit and droplets coming out. I mean, on a treadmill, you're not talking, well, I mean, I'm not talking to anybody in the treadmill, uh, but I still noticed stuff coming out. So it began to make me think. So I've run a thousand kilometers since then, um, during the two kilometer limit that was imposed in Ireland, then there was a five kilometer limit, and now there is uh, at least a, a radius from your house of which you were allowed to run to. So it meant a lot of running around in circles. Um, and after that, uh, we're free to run pretty much anywhere and take outdoor exercise. But lockdowns come and go and it could come again. So I'm gonna tell you some of the things I did and hopefully uh, to, to help reduce the spire, spread of the virus. So I guess the first thing is try and keep your distance. I mean, social distancing is the thing everybody talks about. So the first thing is you could run on a treadmill if you had a treadmill at home or if you have a large garden. But I don't, I don't think most of us have those luxuries. Uh, I have a tiny yard out there. Uh, and so I gotta go running out there. And uh, most of you are probably pretty much the same. So you can do a number of things to try and stay away from people. The first thing is pick quiet roads. I run through an industrial estate. There's a beach nearby, um, but there's a lot less people running or wandering around in the industrial estate, you know, at least on the roads and the footpaths. Uh, I generally try to choose wide footpaths. So some of the footpaths nearby are, say, four meters wide. It's pretty wide, um, but that's inland. If you go run along the beach, uh, they might have the same width of footpath, but there'll be a lot of people on them. So I just basically try and run and avoid people. And of course, starting early. If you run early, less chance of people being around. Sometimes it's not always possible to run when there aren't people around. So I try to look 100 meters, 200 meters ahead. And I try to spend my time thinking about avoiding them. Not them avoiding me. I found that just got frustrating in the end. A lot easier to concentrate on what I could do. So I look ahead, see what I can do, and what evasive action I can take. So when I'm looking ahead, I'm sometimes changing speeds because uh, sometimes I want to pass someone by or there's a couple of people and, and you can slow up and speed down. I mean, as, as a runner, you should be able to change your speeds. That's uh, part of what your training is. Uh, so you're observing, trying to do that. Uh, I try not to run in the center of the path. I run at the edge because someone might be coming up behind me. So I run at the edge and I try and run at the edge facing oncoming traffic. So if I have to jump out into the run out, I don't usually jump out into oncoming traffic or into the roadway, I can at least see if there's someone coming and adjust and make all these adjustments. Uh, so I'm trying to plan ahead. So if I'm going down a hill, I just try and move aside to make way for people going uphill. It's much easier and it's harder when you're moving uphill to, to change directions. So I'm always aware of that when I'm, I'm running downhill or conversely uphill. Typically when people are nearby, I don't run up tight behind people and I don't close in closely in front of them because there's a trail coming out the back of you with the wind. And so it's best not to, not to run and just, it's just trying to keep as far away as possible as re in reasonably practical cost, nothing, just to stay a little bit uh, away as I tuck back in. Or conversely, I see people walking, I try to run behind them so they're not exposed to the trail of stuff that's coming behind me. Another thing I try and do is I try and give a wide sweep at corners because a couple of times, I mean, trying to come around a corner and there's someone coming the other way. So if you can give a wide sweep, you can see again what's happening and give people more room. And of course, you're not always running. Sometimes you're the walker, you're the cyclist, you're the guy in the car. So when I'm operating those things, uh, I'm trying to keep an eye out. When you can't avoid anybody, the path is blocked, you've done everything you can, you can always stop, you can always turn around, you can always run back. And of course, you can always wear a mask. Now, I've been wearing masks since uh, St. Patrick's Day, and I'll 
probably show a clip of a variety of me in various face coverings. Uh, initially I wore ones that uh, I could drag up and down and I would, I would drop them when I was out running, but when I saw so many distance, I would pull the, the snood up. That turned out to be much more hassle than it was worth. You spend all your time thinking about taking the snood up and down. And in the end, I found it was easier just to leave it up. Uh, with the snoods, you can take a single layer or you can double the layers up and we'll have a look at some of them. Uh, or you can even triple the layers up. And that gives you different thickness and that, that uh, prevents the spread of the droplets going even further. And then I wore thicker ones. I ran, I think, up to 30K in a, in a, a gore one that's quite thick. And then uh, I, ran, uh, I ran up to 28K in some of the other ones. And I'll discuss them as we, as we go along. But never uh, under extreme pressure. So always at a low, easy pace. Um, I tried some sprinting and some, and uh, we did some sprints uphill, which I'll show you in a while. And uh, well, uh, they're interesting. So the other day I was running along in my snood and a guy ran up beside me and said, oh, you've got to be careful of wearing a mask. Uh, Ross Tucker says you really be careful. Now, I'd never heard of Ross Tucker, but I thought better find out who this dude is who's saying not to wear a mask. And I was shocked. He's saying the opposite. He's saying wear a mask. It's a very good podcast from South Africa where he's talking all about masks. He says you might lose up to 15% in performance. And now, based on the figures I've got in running my, not too, I mean, okay, I'm running typically 5.30 to 5.45 a kilometer. Uh, but I've run, you know, when I was doing my 28K the other day in the Under Armour mask, I run a couple of five minute kilometers. So, you know, I, and I didn't find it hard. Uh, but when you're sprinting in them, it's hard. But what he's saying is that you can suffer a 15% drop in performance. Now, I'd be delighted if my performance, when I take this mask off, finally after a thousand kilometers or whenever, or however long it takes, in the coronavirus, uh, when we get to not wearing masks, I'd be delighted if I could take it off, if I could run 15% quicker than I am at the moment. I'd be thrilled. So it's kind of like free altitude training. Um, so uh, then there's a guy, Dr. Tom Lawton in the United Kingdom. He ran 22 miles with an oxygen meter, checking that you weren't building up carbon dioxide. And of course, you're still inhaling the air and the air you're exhaling is going somewhere. It's not all trapped up behind the mask or it would blow up like a balloon. Uh, so what the mask is primarily doing is stopping the speed of droplets firing out. Uh, and to me, that's a certain amount of common sense. Uh, but the different masks, depending on the thicknesses, have different effects. And uh, we'll go and have a look at some of them. Hey there, we're here at a windy magazine fort in Dublin and the Phoenix Park. And I'm gonna try and run up some sprints uphill whilst wearing a mask and see what the effect is. Um, presumably not good. Okay, mask one, my gore snood, just a single layer. Off we go. <sighs> well, no real effect, well, not on my performance. So we go down, we'll double it up, and there we go again. Whew. I have a double layer on now. And uh, we're gonna go, here we go. Oh, God. So my performance isn't great, but not because of this. Whew. Okay, I have a double layered buff. Should be just the same as Gore, and we'll go now. <sighs> okay, so the buff doesn't have an appreciable effect on my running. I do, but it's not harming it. 
So let's try the next mask. Okay, so now in a much more heavy duty uh, gore neck warmer, which I've worn for up to about 24, 25K. So I think this will be a bigger challenge than the uh, regular buff type ones, the regular snoots. So off we go. Okay, so tougher, not terrible, but uh, not good, hard. This is much thicker material than the uh, regular buff or gore snood. And you can hear me trying to suck for air. Ooh. On to the next one. Okay, the Under Armour mask. I ran around the park and to and from home the other day, 27K in this mask without any bother. Super comfortable. Um, kind of porous, which we'll discuss later. But we'll, uh, we'll give it a run, see how we get on. Whew. Okay, the mat was vibrating a bit. The mask feels fine. Not restricting my performance in any great way, I don't think. Whew. Okay, next one. Did the buff mask with a filter in it. I'm expecting this to be much tougher. I've run about 24K in this. With the running mask, this will be the hardest. Ooh. So, don't know if you can hear that, but definitely blowing the hardest in this one. Oh, feeling lightheaded. Oh, oh. that's tough. Oh. 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 I'm expecting this to be tough. Don't know how well you can hear me. I haven't run in this before. My first time running, I just jogged down the hill slightly. We're gonna go up. Ooh, might have to stop halfway in this one. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. That's weird. Okay, so, ooh, getting lightheaded. That was weird. Wasn't so bad. Sucking hard. I was able to get the air in and get it out. Easier in some ways. God, it's tiring. One more mask to go. I just jogged lightly down the hill in this one. Feels super comfortable, but imagine it'll be tough. Here we go. That was tough. Oh. Again, feeling lightheaded. Couldn't run this for very long. Oh. I have a variety of different face coverings that I've been acquiring during, during lockdown. And uh, we'll go through a couple of them. I suppose 
The simplest one is this sort of snood thing. This one is by Buff. Uh, I'm probably holding it upside down. Nope, it's the right way up. And you can wear it as a single layer. It's very easy to put on. So, uh, of course, really handy for uh, robbing banks. Uh, but you can put it on. And what I was doing initially was putting it up and then running along and then taking it down when there was nobody around. Uh, when I was running by them, I was breathing to the side if they were there and vice versa. Uh, but ultimately it, it falls up and down. On a long run, it's kind of, it kind of nags away at you. You see my glasses fucking up. I'm usually running in contact lenses. Um, but uh, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, it's really flexible. It's really handy. Um, and my, an oddity was, um, I noticed when I went to meet a friend for a social distance coffee, I got sunburn on the back of my neck because I've been so used to wearing a snood all the time outside uh, that it really does protect your neck. They're, they're super thing. I mean, they're great if you have a ponytail. All, there's all sorts of uses for these. Great to have. Um, and what happens is, and you'll see this in the, in the running videos, you can, that's a single layer or you can, you can double the layers up and, uh, yeah, it's comfortable, uh, it's very handy, it's very flexible. Um, but you're fiddling with it a lot, and, and that's one of the reasons why the mask is much better, because uh, you're touching it all the time, you're touching your face, um, and you're feeding yourself if you're running 28K or whatever, longer than that. So it's primarily useful for stop stuff going out, you know, stuff that goes on and you're touching it and blah, blah. You could go into the shower and afterwards and just come back and shower wearing this stuff. I've contemplated that, but if you watch any other videos, you've seen enough shower scenes with me, and uh, so we'll ignore that. So we'll take this one off. And then the next one I ran a lot of, because uh, and these I had, or this one I had. Uh, this was a, uh, a gold winter warmer. This is really comfortable, and it goes right around the neck, and then it goes up, stay, stays in place. I don't know whether, what way around, I've got the core, core lettering, sometimes it's upside down. But uh, I actually like this, it's much thicker. It's much thicker, um, so I'd say it's like a triple air, and you can see it's sucking in here. Uh, I tried a few sprints in this, and uh, you'll see it also going uphill, and uh, I was wheezing at the end of it all. Yeah. With, with a single layer of this one, you really don't notice anything. <sighs> don't, you don't notice anything at all. Double air, a little bit more. Uh, so then I got the buff produced these masks. Um, now I suspect uh, that so it's got a it's got a little liner there. You buy these these filters and you stop you slit a, a filter in there, and then hang on, I better put this thing on. Uh, it has adjustments and has straps, so let's stick the old buff machine on. Uh, this. Interesting enough, this bit goes over your head and I run in a cap. Uh, and so there's no filter in it at the moment. Um, but all it needs is a little red ball here. Um, but but when you, the, the, the filter moves around, it's very hard to stay in place. And inside in, in this, um, the fabric is cut in such a way that fibers are continually getting into my face, which is annoying. I suspect used properly, this is probably the best uh, mask to protect myself but on a long run the filter slips a bit and it's 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 like a really 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 good prototype but a prototype now I commend buff for releasing it I mean a lot of people are rushing to market with stuff this is probably a bit too soon but yeah I, I commend buff for doing this I got I actually got two of them um, so then recently I got this well the other day I got this so I got this and I ran 28 Ks on Sunday in it. This is the Under Armour uh, mask. It's triple layer. There's, it's, it's quite vented at the top. So you can see my glasses aren't fogging up probably as much as it was in the earlier ones. Um, but this is super comfortable. And to be honest, this is my favorite of the masks. Um, I'll link the costs and where you can buy them. This is sold out, I think. But it, it, it register with Under Armour and they let you know when they're getting some more. In the States, I think you can pre-order. In Europe, you can kind of put your name on a list to be told when they're available. Um, and the great thing, as I've said before about Under Armour, is the shipping is free, so th there's no discounts on the mask. Under Armour, a lot of discounts and stuff. But um, I'll put the cost below, but, but this would be my number one favorite. Uh, it's, it's slightly open at the nose, and it's hard to eat in it. You kind of push it up and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love this mask. I think it's really good.
Okay, so I also ran uh, in some of the videos in two of these things. This is a full FFP3 mask, FFP3 NRD to your EN149-2001, CE0121. And I ran it, I got them from work. Uh, oh, Jesus, sorry. I got, I got this one from work and I tried running in it. And I was in the airport recently wearing one of these and I noticed that water dripping out of the center of this. Uh, but it's a super comfortable mask to wear. So um, it's, this one has got a little bend around the nose. And when I was running, um, I can hear the funny nose, n nasal sound because it is actually p p p pushing it on my nose. But when I was running, it was actually strange in that there's a, there's a sort of volume around the nose to allow the air to be there. It wasn't as hard, it was hard to run in, um, but it, not as hard as I thought it would be. Okay, I was nearly conking out at the end, so you wouldn't run in this. Uh, but still an interesting mask. We'll have a, and then there's this other one, which is CE0194, another FFP3 mask. Um, and this this is really good, because there's, lo there's lots of adjustment in this one. Um, I won't go through the whole rigmarole of putting it on, but. There are a variety of different masks and I've tried to run in all of them and you can see that in the, in the shots from the Phoenix Park where I'm running up the hill. So I've tried a variety of different masks. Uh, ASICs are making a new mask. I'll buy that when it comes out. Um, and I might, I consider trying to make my own. And I think any form of fabric that stops the gunge firing out. Uh, and there's a lot of gunge that, that they, when you come back with some of the masks, with the day I went out running, the, I ran nearly 30K. In, in this one. This was soaked with stuff. Now I know a lot of it's sweat, but I had to keep rotating it around just to find a sort of piece of fabric to breathe through that wasn't covered in, I guess, my mucus. Yuck. I'm gonna pay homage to Bill Nye, the science guy, who created this test where you blow out the candle using different masks on your face and see how far away you can go and what effect they have, which will show you how much it reduces the amount of stuff coming out your mouth. So, this is all gonna go horribly wrong, but that's what we have YouTube for. I'm going to the back of the frame. <sighs> that was pretty good. Now this is not an exact science. Okay, so I'll start here, double air. <laughs> Fairly a flicker. <laughs> so from here, I can just about do it with a double air. Okay. I'll try with the Under Armour mask. I mean, some of this you can tell without me blowing out the candle, just by the effect on the flame. So, let's take this on the right way up. So you can see nothing's happening. Well, to the candle, to the flame. Okay, so I can't do it because the air kind of goes up here. But as long as it's not going out that way, that's okay with me. Right, I'll go for the full beans, the FFP3 thing. Let's see how this, this goes. Well, doesn't even have any effect. Right, we'll have another go. Okay, so that works. We'll try the, I'm gonna have a go, let's try this. Okay, let's see, it's down here by first. <laughs> so from this instance, I can make it, I can make the flame move. Yay! So, if I was to rank these, okay. This, depending on how many layers, 
it reduces. I mean, I, I already knew this before I tried this with the candle, but this reduces it. And the more layers, you could probably try and triple layer this, but this is a really flexible, these, these uh, buffs. And there's a whole load of different types. I've got a, another uh, one by Gore, which is pretty similar. Uh, and there's loads of things in the market and they'll be pretty good, I have to say. Uh, followed probably by, by this one, which is, I bought for winter wear really, but, but it's good for what we're trying to do here. Um, oh, I didn't try these ones. Oh, better, better uh, sticky old buff thing. So this thing goes in there. That, now I'm not trying to do this hygienically or anything at the moment. I'm just trying to make it so I can, I have to light the candle. So stick this on, you can kind of see it. It's gone in there now more or less. Glasses off. It is very fiddly. This thing is bloody fiddly. I think it's, it's probably save a lot of people, but uh, it's fiddly. It really has all the feel of a first gen prototype. But as I said before, buffer to be congratulated on giving it a go. And again, it sells out a lot. Comes in lots of different colors. So here you go with the... So, start from here. So it flickers, I think it flickers a little bit more, but you can see my glasses are, well, you can see my glasses are fogging up. Craigie, I'll be dead uh, before I blow out this candle. So pretty effective at reducing stuff going out. I think it's also effective reducing stuff going in. So take that one off. But yeah, best one, this. Super easy to stick on. Uh, pretty comfortable, I mean, around 28K in it. Yeah, get one of these. So one of the things that the mask does is it signals to me when I'm wearing it for the 28K or whatever, that there's a pandemic on and that while I'm wearing this thing out running in the bright sunshine, because it's always sunny in lockdown, um, I'm aware that there are people who are going through terrible times in hospitals, both the staff and, and, and the patients, and they come back and they're all, you, you can see on, on the internet, you see all the pictures of people who got like welts from wearing masks for 12 hours. I come back, none of these things are digging into me because I'm not out for very long. So I wear them, it reminds me of that. Um, I, I mentioned the sunburn issue, so this protects me from the sunburn. Uh, it has a slightly odd side effect, which I hadn't realized, is it stops me spitting. Um, Spitting isn't a great habit, but I think most runners probably do it here and there. Um, but you can't, well, I mean, you can, but you, you wouldn't if you're wearing this thing. So I carry a tissue with me. And so that I think is a benefit. Um, I haven't found running in masks a hardship. If everybody does their bit, uh, hopefully this virus will reduce. And then as it reduces, and hopefully we can eliminate it or control it, uh, all the things that we like, we may be able to get back to normal. We may be able to go to bubs and bars. We may be able to socialize a bit more. And if wearing this flimsy piece of fabric over my mouth in the same way that I wear a piece of underwear over the rest of the stuff, you know, I'm prepared to do it. Until the next video, stay safe. Just keep running along.